So let's look at Bioware's response to Jason Schreier's Kotaku article, How Bioware's Anthem Went Wrong. We chose not to comment or participate in this story because we felt there was an unfair focus on specific team members and leaders who did their absolute best to bring this totally new idea to fans. We didn't want to be part of something that was attempting to bring them down as individuals. We respect them all, and we built this game as a team. Really, is that before or after major and minor Bioware alumni left because they weren't having fun and the project was a mess for five solid years? David Gator was brought in to write for Anthem, and he found the process frustrating and left in early 2016 saying, as time passed, I didn't feel keen to play the game I was working on. I'm curious, what part of Gator's writing was actually used? because this is one year before Casey Hudson came back. The health and well-being of our team members is something we take very seriously. We have built a new leadership team over the last couple of years, starting with Casey Hudson as our GM in 2017, which has helped us make big steps to improve studio culture and our creative focus. Oh, so before that, the five other years, you had developers frequently find a private room in the office, shut the door, and just cry. People were so angry and sad all the time. Depression and anxiety are an epidemic within Bioware. I cannot actually count the amount of stress casualties we had on Mass Effect Andromeda or Anthem. A stress casualty at Bioware means someone had such a mental breakdown from the stress, they're just gone for one to three months. Some come back, some don't. How many months, Bioware, until you notice there's a, something wrong with all of your projects? How much longer do things have to get bad before you realize your team doesn't have even a working level after five years? We put a lot of focus on better planning to avoid crunch time, and it was not a major topic or feedback in our internal postmortems, probably because those people had already left for both Anthem and Andromeda. Here's a four-star review from September 2018 on Glassdoor from someone who was working at Bioware for over 10 years. This is their con section. It's now become just another EA Studio clone. The dollar is the ultimate bottom line now, as opposed to the quality of both the product and the workplace, which used to be the priority. Long hours of expected crunch with poor food options during finaling stages is still a problem here. Excess bloat of middle management producer positions, which are full of people with little to no experience in the departments they are working with causes ignorant scheduling and inappropriate tasking. Now this post is eight months ago, so they could have gotten better since then. Making games, especially new IP, will always be one of the hardest entertainment challenges. Oh, okay, I guess KOTOR, Jade Empire, and the first Mass Effect and Dragon Age were just flukes? You had no experience on how to do these things? It's new every single time? We don't see the value in tearing down one another or one another's work. We don't believe articles that do that are making our industry and craft better. It doesn't really matter who did the work. If you can't critique, you'll never learn. You'll never, ever get better. Listen here, Bioware, the writer of this post, whomever. If you can't accept criticism from 19 of your ex-employees who are telling you you're horrible at management, you're horrible at building development pipelines, you're horrible at using frostbite, and you're horrible at nailing down a design. You will never learn. It's been three games. You are screwing it up, and you're going to screw it up again right now with Dragon Age or whatever you're working on right now with Mass Effect. Who knows? Our full focus is on our players and continuing to make Anthem everything it can be for our community. Thank you to our fans for your support. We do what we do for you. Here's an idea. Try to make the games your workers want to make. Make it a, a science, a production line. Make sure everyone knows what they're doing and then how, and then you write down how to do it. You focus on the game, the creative design, and then you just build it. And then the fans will come to you. You won't need to fix things because they're not broken. You don't need to release crap and then say, oh, we're doing it for the fans. We'll fix it for the fans. Your last three games have been broken from the premise technically and creatively. Making media should be a selfish thing. Someone, a champion of that idea, should have a vision for it. It should be written down in stone. Then you get all the people around you who will think the same way. And then you get a production pipeline going. And then you just build the damn thing. 
You don't drive your workers to a nervous breakdown or they need sick leave for months. And finally, make a game that you love. Be your own worst critic before someone like me has to remind you for the umpteenth time how bad you are at making these things. We all want what's best for you and the games you make, not your your psychophantic people who are asking for things and say you can do no wrong. Just make good art. Listen to all of your critics, even the ones you disagree with. They might have something they might want to tell you. Do what only you can do best. Make good art. Make it on the bad days. Make it on the good days, too. And fifthly, while you're at it, make your art. Do the stuff that only you can do. The urge starting out is to copy, and that's not a bad thing. Most of us only find our own voices after we've sounded like a lot of other people. But the one thing that you have that nobody else has is you. Your voice, your mind, your story, your vision. So write and draw and build and play and dance and live as only you can.